Hello, in this video we're going to be creating a sleep function so that we can sleep and wait for something to happen. The way that we're going to be doing this is using the pit chip or the programmable interval timer. Alright, let's get started. So the first thing we want to do is create a new folder and call it something like scheduling and then inside of that folder we can create a folder specific for the pit chip so just call it pit and then we can add two source files pit.h and pit.cpp. Alright, now inside pit.h we can do pragma once and we can include standard int dot h. Now we can create a namespace for the pit, so namespace pit, and we can declare some variables. So we have an extern double time since boot. So this variable will keep track of how many seconds has passed since the system has begun. Now it's not going to be perfectly accurate. The real time clock is more suited towards that, but this is going to be good for a simple, mostly precise sleep function. All right. The way that the programmable interval timer works is it runs on a base frequency. So let's define that base frequency now. So we have a uint 64t base frequency, and this is equal to 1193182. And this is how many times the PIT chip oscillates per second, and we can program it to send an interrupt to our operating system on a divisor of this base frequency. So it will count up until our divisor and then send an interrupt. So if we set our divisor to a theoretical 1193182, then it will send an interrupt every one second. But we can't do that because the divisor can only go up to 65535. But theoretically, if we could do that, then we would have one every one second. Also, if we set the divisor to one, then we will have one interrupt every single tick, which is way too fast. So we want somewhere in between. Right, so now we need a void sleep. And this takes a double second. Now I know some people like to do sleep in milliseconds, so we'll just rename this sleep to sleep D. And we'll also define a normal sleep, taking a uint 64t milliseconds. Now we have a function set divisor, and this sets the divisor to the value that we specify. We have a getter to get frequency. So this is how many interrupts it's going to be producing per second. And we have a void set frequency, We're taking a uint 64t frequency. And we have a void, which is called every time we get the interrupt. Right, now we can jump on into pit.cpp and include pit.h. We can add in our namespace pit. And now we can define our extern variable time since boot. So we can just copy this double time since boot and paste that in. Make sure that it equals zero. Then we can initialize our divisor, the default divisor. So we can set it to 65535, which is the maximum value, which means that we will have the slowest possible interrupt rate, or the most delay between interrupts. And the first function we're going to implement is the set divisor function. Now this is the one that's going to actually be talking to the pit chip on the IO bus. So it's probably the most important function. So void set divisor, uint 16t divisor. If divisor is less than 100, then divisor equals 100. We don't want it to go less than 100 because then that will just be way too fast. We can set our global divisor to our local divisor so that we can keep track of the divisor that we're using. And then we can use the IO functions. So we need to include dot dot forward slash IO dot H. Now we can do out B and the port for the pit chip is 0x40. And now we need to pass in the lower portion of our divisor, the first eight bits. So cast it to a uint 8t bracket divisor and 0x00ff. Right, now I need to do IO wait to make sure that that gets applied correctly. And now we can pass in the upper eight bits of our divisor. So we pass into port 0x40, cast it to a uint 8t, two brackets divisor and 0xff00, Go out of one bracket and then bit shift to the right by eight. And that's how we set the divisor. 
Now we can create the function uint64t get frequency. And to get the frequency of something, you just need to divide the base frequency by the divisor. So we can do that pretty simply. Return base frequency divided by divisor. And then we can do void set frequency. Taking in a uint64t frequency. Set divisor. Base frequency divided by frequency. Now we have one more function we need to do, which is void tick. And what we can do is just increment time since boot. So time since boot plus equals one divided by casted to a double get frequency. Now we can actually put the tick function inside of the pit interrupt handler, which we're going to have to create. But before we do that, let's create the sleep function. So the sleep function is really simple. It's just void sleep. And we'll start off with the double sleep function double seconds we can do double start time equals time since boot so we just keep track of the time that we called the sleep function and then we can do while time since boot is less than start time plus seconds ASM halt and to implement void sleep you in 64 milliseconds it can just be a wrapper for our sleep D function, milliseconds times 1000. Right, now that we've got all of those functions set up, we need to create the interrupt handler for our pit. So now going on to interrupts.h, we can duplicate our mouse interrupt handler and change it to the pit interrupt handler. Then inside interrupts.cpp, we can write the implementation for that. So let's just copy the mouse interrupt handler again change it to the pit interrupt handler and get rid of all of these lines. So after the pit interrupt, we need to do pick underscore end master and we also need to call pit tick. So that's a pretty simple interrupt handler. So we need to also include the pit header. So that's include dot dot forward slash scheduling forward slash pit forward slash pit dot h. Right, now that we have that, we need to unmask the bit in the pick chip. So inside kernelutil.cpp, we can unmask the pit chip inside of the pick chip. And the bit mask for the pit is the very first bit. So just set that one to zero. Right, now that we have that, we can go back into kernel.cpp and we can do a test. So for int t equals zero, t less than 20, t plus plus. And we need to include our scheduling forward slash pit forward slash pit dot h. We can do global renderer dot put char g and then pit colon colon sleep and let's sleep for 10 milliseconds. We're also going to need to set the divisor for the pit so pit colon colon set divisor and I just like to use 65535 that works fine for everything that I've used it for so far uh, so we will have no such file or directly for io.h so in pit.cpp we need two dot dot forward slashes to get to io.h one last thing that I forgot to do is we actually need to register the interrupt handler inside of the IDT. So inside kernelutil.cpp, we need to set the IDT gate for the pit int handler, which has an offset of 0x to 0. And also one more thing, we'll change this put char to a print, just so that it moves forward with the cursor position. And we'll change this t to 200, just so that we can see it more a little bit more in action. So this needs to be divided by 1000. And we also just need to cast milliseconds to double before we divide it, or else we are getting an integer number, which just won't work. All right, now we should be able to run that, and Gs should be popping up on the screen over time. All right, yeah, so as you can see, Gs are popping up on the screen just as we want them to, 10 per second, as our sleep function has been set to sleep for 100 milliseconds. We can also sleep for five milliseconds and have it go really fast. So let's do that for 2000 iterations. 
All right, so as you can see, the G is popping up on the screen, but it's still going quite slow. And that's because of the speed that we have our divisor set to. So if we want that to go a little bit faster, we can set the divisor to something like 2,000, 20,000, sorry. And it will be three times faster, or we can even set it to 2,000. And then let's see how fast that goes. Now, as you can see, that is a lot faster, which is what we would expect with a delay of 10 milliseconds. Now, this is by no means an accurate sleep function, but for some things in the kernel that we need to wait for, this will work quite nicely. And it's also just a something nice that we can play around with for anything that you might want to use a sleep function for. Alright, thank you for watching, and I will see you next time. I just wanted to say a quick thank you to my patrons. We have the tier 2 patrons Cole Foderado, Mad Max, Jewel Kem, Bobby Addison, Jim Borden, Rizix, and Daniel Cosper. And thank you to my tier 1 patrons Adam, Kenneth Looney, THXTNT, and David Gonzalez. I really appreciate any support you can give.